COVID struck us last year, Malaysia Women Marathon was the first running event to have been cancelled. And um, we were not able to carry out the event because at that time, people didn't know what the pandemic was all about. And the fear factor came in. So we had to shut down the event, although we had already uh, built up our tents, we had already prepared. So just two days before the event, the running event, we had to shut down. And, and you know, it was difficult for us. It was a difficult decision. And it was even, even more difficult for us to move forward to the next plan, to the next uh, business. Uh, we had to find ways or find other sources to, to make revenue. And in a good way, that, that first uh, set of MCO in 2020 allowed us to think of what we want to do in our future, what we can move into, and uh, come sit back, you know, take a step back and dissect on, on our plans, how we can move forward. And one of the ways that we came out with was to go into virtual running and virtual running being in the virtual platform you know you did, it doesn't have to be in an open space finding uh, venues for people to assemble for run so people who sign up just take their front gate as you know, part of their finish line and our start line the finish line and back to the issue that period of MCO allowed us to think of how to evolve our business model, how to plan ahead. And what we did was we had a series of running uh, attire. So we, our team for virtual run was to create our budget kebaya, our traditional costume. So we had a kebaya run, we had a chung sum run. We're going to come out with the nyapan indu iban run. We're going to come up with the Kadazan Baju run. We're going to come up with the Sari run. So this was the plan that we had and it kept us going. Yeah, so in a way, instead of looking at something negative that we couldn't move forward, you know, because of the COVID, we think of something positive. And if we sit back, that was a positive time for us. We sat back and we figure out what we had to do. We also went into selling merchandise. We also went into selling masks. Yeah, so that was the other side of the revenue we didn't think of. Doing. So we went into that, you know, we, we explored it. We, we opened up our opportunities somewhere which we didn't think we, we wanted to tap into. I am actually a lawyer by profession. So, mm -hmm. but I stopped being a lawyer. I stopped. I stopped the legal profession in 2005. Okay, I have the children. I became a home, a home minister. <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed at home for a while and took care of the kids and then realized that I was hitting 40 and, oh, okay, I need to do something. So I started running. And, you know, like you say, I fell in love with running. Fell in love with running. And then I realized that not a lot of women were running. Because uh, Singapore, as a small country, had a bigger ratio of women running. And Singapore at that time had this women's only run and women's only event. So, and then I was like, oh, okay, if Singapore can have it, let's do it for Malaysia. You know, we can't, we, we, we can't lose out to Singapore because it's a small country, but their ratio of women running at that time was so much higher than the one in Malaysia. So I'll give you a comparison. So in Malaysia, at about um, at that time, 2009, I think the data was 2009, um, only 400 women ran the full marathon distance that's the, um, in one of our biggest marathons in Malaysia. So that data sort of piqued my interest and in, we were going, why do we have so few women running full marathons, you know? Is it very difficult to run 42 kilometers? Hey, let's, let's just encourage more women to run. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe women are just so terrified of this competition in, in so many in events that they don't come out to participate in the event. So we came up with this idea of having a women's marathon. In 
May last year, in May 2020, there were only 10 new cases. You see, so we were actually on the way to combat the virus, but something happened. And, and, and that is a situation where people didn't, we, people became lackadaisical about how they want to um, observe the SOP. And from there, you can see the situation um, became worse, especially this year. And, and, and look at this, we, we were on the way to recover, but again, this came back with so many waves and the intensity of it coming back became worse now. We, um, so it, the message here is that people really have to be very careful and have to observe uh, the SOP very, very carefully. And um, with respect to vaccination, I think it becomes a responsibility of everyone to get their vaccination. I've, I'm, I'm waiting for my second dose. My family has also taken their vaccination. Um, and as part of being in a community, we should be helping each other to ensure that this spread, this, this virus come out of it. We come out of this earlier, you know, as early as possible because there's so many. Yes, Penang will be our local destination. Uh, if you're looking at uh, international, we, I would like we, to bring my parents to England because my brother's there, his family's there. It'd be nice for the parents to see the brother in England. But then again, do the vaccination. Uh, everyone, please go get the vaccination done. I think that's your passport these days. <laughs>